that strange time. I mean, they really hit the ground running. Both these programs hit the ground running, have been very impressive the past few years. Pierce and Hanson will tip it off, and we are underway from Jadwin on senior night. And one of the seniors, Manalaco at the controls, throws it to his fellow senior, Zach Martini. Lee on the attack, setting up Martini, corner three, no good. Isaiah Gray, who did not play in the first matchup, grabbing the rebound. Williams, Gray, Mannon, Nord, and Hanson, the five for the Big Red. Mannon with a big performance against the Tigers in the win in January for Cornell, 10 to shoot. Mannon lobs it inside for Hanson, double team, but banks it in. Yeah, and just a second late for Blake Peters on the help, and it's, that's just enough for Sean Hanson to finish over him, and already full court pressure from the Big Red. So Sean Hanson starts up the scoring. Meanwhile, on the other side for Princeton, the same five as always this season. Pierce, Malaco, Lee, Peters, and Martini. Another shot missed by the Tigers. Is this time Mannon out of the pack with it? Good transition defense initially from the Tigers. The last thing they want is Chris Mannon to get sight of the basket early on. Mannon misses that three as the Tigers get back to it. They started out slow last night in the win against Columbia. Fell behind 21-12 before surging and not looking back. Alaco knocks down the three-pointer. Matt Alaco, who left the game with an injury yesterday, didn't play at all in the second half. On senior night, he knocks down the tray. Princeton up. Hanson gets a look at a three. Catches the back of the rim. Davian Lee with it. Malaco. Peters lines up a three. Can't get it to drop. Hanson with the rebound. All right, you see Cornell's insistence to push the ball up the floor. Easy slam for Sean Hanson running rim to rim. Sean Hanson, who has started every game this season, giving Cornell the 4-3 to three lead. One thing about Cornell's defense, so unpredictable sometimes. I mean, it feels like they're playing normal man-to-man, -man, and all of a sudden they're on top of you in the corner. Pierce, back to the basket, now with seven. Going against Nazir Williams. Down to three, turning, and... He wedges the ball in between the rim and the backboard. And that gives things back to Cornell. And Nazir Williams with an impressive one-on-one -on -one stop there. Obviously gave it up some size, but really anchored down and, and forced a, a tough shot. Cooper Nord hits the three. So Cooper Nord, who can drill it from deep. He's hit a team high 47 threes coming into this game, and it's a 7-3 lead for Cornell. And they get it done so quickly on the offensive end. Remind, reminiscent of those seven seconds or less type offenses. They can score a lot in a hurry. Lee. Now to Alaco. He'll line up another three. That one's off the mark. Goes to Chris Manning. Isaiah Gray from deep. That misses the mark. Isaiah Gray, one of the few players for this big red team who isn't, isn't the best three-point shooter. So in transition, I think Princeton's more okay with giving that one up. Is Isaiah Gray with the steal. Gray to Manon, and Manon turns his back to the basket to lay it in. So Chris Manon extending the lead to 9-3, and that defense of Cornell, it's not talked about a lot because of the offense so much, but making the play there makes it. They are so insistent on creating turnovers. They take a lot of risk defensively, but when they're getting their hands on passes, they are capable of going on enormous scoring runs. Lee gets it, eight to shoot. Down to five. Now down to three. Lee will pull it, misses the three. Manon had it for a second. Gray puts Martini to the floor, no call, and Gray is out of bounds, and he's cut. 
Yes, he is. A timeout on the floor as Isaiah Gray will have to be tended to. And that will lead us into the first whistle for a timeout. The Cornell Big Red taking care of business early on. They lead it by six over the Tigers. So beautiful. Morning, Rob. Looking great. Does that say USAA? Yeah. Throughout the course of the game. Now, one of the things he needs from his team is speed and intensity, and, and it would be really hard to play their, their style of play with six or seven guys. So they need to widen that bench just so everybody's fresh and they can continue to play the style of play that he's starting to perfect. Five to shoot for the Tigers. Dalen Davis, who was great last night, launches a jumper and hits. He's been so impressive recently. He just seems to get better every game, and that's a really big shot for Princeton. He had a career-high 16 in the effort on Friday. A slew of changes for the Big Red as Guy Raglan will try a three and knock it down. And Guy Raglan Jr. can drill it from deep. It's another aspect of this Cornell offense that's so hard to guard because all of their bigs are capable shooters. So if you back up to help off of any of those numerous actions off the ball, they're capable of just popping it right in your face. And that was a tremendous job from Raglan. Alaco. Pierce going to Keller Boothby. Four to shoot. Alaco trying to create. Alaco fadeaway jumper. No good. And the rebound grabbed by Jake Fegan. And so far, Cornell forcing a lot of difficult shots for Princeton on that end of the floor. Raglan will try another triple and knock it down. Guy Raglan back-to-back three-pointers, and the Tigers will call a timeout. And there you go, Mason. We see the three-point shooting ability. Peters, Zach Martini forced to help to not give up the layup, and he's ready to step into it right away. And, you know, when you get a guy who gets a capable shooter, gets a couple great looks like that right away, it's really dangerous for the rest of the game as well. Alaco finding Pierce. Pierce looking to post up, gets the ball. Against Vegan. Hangs in the air and puts it home. Caden Pierce with a bucket. And if they're going to continue to struggle, struggle, they're going to need Caden Pierce to get it going inside. He's one of their main post threats. More of that's needed if you're Mitch Henderson and the Princeton Tigers tonight. The lead at eight for Cornell. Under 10 to shoot for the Big Red. And that's going to be an offensive foul against A.K. Okareke. And A.K. Okareke is in a really difficult matchup in the Ivy League. Looks 6'7", 6'8", can take people off the dribble. Tremendous finisher inside. Obviously, defensively, we know he can do. But Caden Pierce did a great job staying in front, forcing that contact to be square into his chest, and then going down. Honestly, I don't think anybody in the building saw that one any differently. Very little argument from Brian Earl or Akarike himself. Davis and a foul as Davis working against Fegan. One thing I know Mitch Henderson talked about in the lead up to this game is that Cornell always looking for steals. They love to grab cutters a lot. And so I know he emphasized getting those calls early on, and there you just saw one with Dalen Davis on the ball. Malaco gets to the foul line, pull up Jay, can't get it. Pierce falls to the floor after the big red rebound. Williams lobs it inside to Hanson, who lays it in. It looked like Williams was going to load up there to shoot, but he caught the Princeton defense off guard with a pass. And we saw Caden Pierce fall under the rim on the off for Princeton has been stagnant to start three of 11 and they've missed on four or five from three and they've been forced into some difficult jump shots if you're Mitch Henderson the offense is designed for inside out three-point shots more than anything else the shots they've been forced into have been off the bounce semi contested or fully contested that's not going to get it done the rest of the way 
Jack Scott in for the Tigers. Davis will pop it again and knock it down again over the extended arm of Hanson. You can tell he's worked a lot his entire life on that shot. He loves that pull-up jump shot off the pick and roll. That time, hand up, didn't matter. And a steal by Pierce. Pierce against Hanson. All the way in, lays it in. You see Matalaco immediately yelling, get back, get back. They go off misses and made baskets just as fast. They erased a couple of 14-point deficits last night against Penn, and another steal created by the Princeton defense. Down the floor for Pierce. Pierce to the rim with the dunk. And a turnover off the pass intended for Nazir Williams. And it's interesting, one thing I noticed about this Cornell offense going into that last time out, only one turnover. All of a sudden they're at four, and it's almost a brand new ball game. Definitely the momentum switched so quickly in that stretch. Cornell uses its first time out. Mason, the defense turning into offense. Once you're struggling, got to get the ball out in transition. Great finish from K. To beat them, they won't give it to you. Especially at home, right? I mean, if you're going to come into Jadwin Gymnasium and win, something that has not been done this year, you can't put them on the line. You're going to have to turn them over. It just it, it's, it's a really tall task for visiting opponents. Tigers have scored six straight here to cut it to a four-point game. Martini can't get the three. Scott right there with the offensive rebound. Yeah, extra possession so big against a team like Cornell. Davis, fadeaway jumper. And Gray tracks it down. Gray gets it back. Trying to work against Martini. Hanson got Davis up in the air. Now Gray left alone from deep, and he misses everything. Martini was out on a run there. But a good idea, I think, from the freshman to hang on to it. That's the only that's the type of pass you can only throw if you're sure. Alaco against Cooper Nord. Trying to back him down. Spins, puts it up, and the senior from Ohio. We'll go to the line for a pair of free throws. And that stretch before the last media timeout really awakened this Tiger offense. Look at Matalaco not taking no for an answer, spinning off of Cooper Norton and then getting him in the air. Very nearly an and one. But he'll be happy with a trip to the line. He missed the second half of the game last night with an undisclosed injury. Yeah, I know quite a few Tiger fans were terrified, for lack of a better word, when that happened. Well, he's been such a fixture here for this team, and heading into last night, he had played 40 minutes in three of the last four games. So yeah. when he's not there, it is jarring. Oh, and people don't realize how important he is to this team. I mean, obviously people understand he's the captain, one of the best players, but it goes above and beyond that. He's almost like having a coach on the floor. He knows everything that's going on at all times. Extremely valuable player. Down to a two-point lead. North from three. Catches the rim. Pierce with a rebound. Tigers can tie it or take a lead with a three. Davis. And Gray with another board. Again, looking to push in transition. Good job from the Tigers showing Isaiah Gray bodies. He is dangerous getting downhill. Cornell has not scored in nearly three minutes. Nord, long three. That hits off the rim. The rebound controlled by the Big Red. To the post for Raglan. Down to nine. The offensive rebound and the putback by A.K. Okareke. And you, can, you see there what he's capable of doing. Catches Matalaco, I believe it was, napping on the weak side block as this comes straight over the rim. It was a good initial contest, but wedges himself in there. Good, strong finish. I mean, you look at this guy. He was so instrumental in, in their biggest win of the season against Yale. They're going to need him to do some of that stuff tonight as well against Princeton. He was doing it on both sides of the floor. Tremendous athlete. I know Brian Earl's very excited about him. 
And the three-point play is completed by Okareke to make it a five, and that's a foul against Chris Mannon. Five-point game as Mannon ended up bumping Blake Peters. And, you know, a bit fortunate for Princeton. I think they were caught napping a bit with that trap in the front court. Like we've talked about, Cornell switching between defenses all the time. So hard to know what they're going to come out in against you. Pierce cuts to the rim and lays it in. Great feed from Xavier Lee. Okareke left all alone, and he throws up an air ball. Davis going baseline, attacking, kicking it out for Lee. Lee on the move, wide open, Davis three, no good. Pierce offensive rebound. Peters steps into a three, that misses. And Boothby had it knocked wow. away from him and almost stolen by Davis. Extra possession, so important, unable to convert there for Princeton, but that was one of their best possessions of the night. Three up, that's no good from Jacob Beckles and the rebound controlled by Xavier Lee. And if you're Princeton, you gotta worry about some of these transition threes you're giving up. If Xavier Lee pulls the trigger, can't get it to go. They haven't been burned yet recently, but Cornell always looking for those. Oh, what a spin by Chris Mann. And as soon as you don't show him multiple bodies, he is go, 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 getting down into the paint. Once he's down there, he is so hard to stop. Great aggression from Chris Mannon. And Lee is able to draw the whistle on his penetration. That is number two against A.K. Okareke. And he will head out. Interesting substitution with Vernon Collins coming into the game for Zach Martini. Collins did not play last night as Lee still can't get going. Man, it's all about pulling up for a three and then thought better of it. Williams to the post for Ragland. Manning looks at his feet, launches a three, another air ball. Yeah, something, there might be a draft over that rim these right now. That's three from Cornell in the past few minutes. They're still up five, 22-17, seven and a half left to go in the first half. Pierce double team behind the back pass to Collins who gets blocked by Manning. Williams, what a crossover by Nazir Williams. And he is electric in the open floor as they're forcing the turnover here off Dalen Davis. Big momentum swing for the big red here. Cornell leads it by seven. They have some deadly offensive players, Mason. They have many for Princeton. That last one, you know, Chris Mannon came from behind. I think that was a clean play. Maybe contact there, but in a game like this, you've got to fight through as much contact as possible if you want to be the Ivy League champion when it's all said and done. Derek Jones and Mason Hooks with you tonight as the layup attempt no good by Fegan. Tipped around and grabbed by the Princeton Tigers as Lee trying to go against Manon. Big game tonight between two of the three teams involved in a tie for first place in the H&H. Malaco trying to get by Fegan. Gets underneath the rim, kicks it, Martini three up. That is no good. Alaco offensive rebound. In deep trouble, Davis all alone from deep. Money. Do they have an absolute stud on their hands or what with Dalen Davis? Look he, at what he is turning into before our very own eyes. He has been extremely impressive as of late. The counter three by Fegan misses Martini with a rebound. Lee just tried to bank it in. The wild ricochet out to Martini. He's short on the three, Ragland with a rebound. Martini unable to get it going from deep, but always dangerous. Struggling so far tonight. Manning looking for help. The double team at Ragland. Vegan drives cut off. Boothby steps into a three, rattles out. And a foul on the way. This will be against Cornell. 
and a good defensive possession from Princeton. Finished off with a strong rebound from Xavier Lee. And there is some more blood. Looks like that is on Xavier Lee. We'll see. Looks like he had something on his arm. And he heads out. Davis gets to the lane and can't throw it in. And now a foul on the other end. As Cooper Nord able to get his hand on the loose ball, Lee will head back into the contest. Looks like he had a cut there on his right arm. And they wrapped it up, looks like. It's always frustrating as a player. You have to come out of the game for like 30 seconds. Messes up your rhythm. Always a frustrating one. Isaiah Gray got cut earlier in the game. He has a bandage over his eye. He's got it here. And a foul against Princeton to the dismay of this sold-out crowd. Man, and it was, he was right in the perfect spot. It was almost a tremendous play. I'd love to see the replay if we have it, but he's going to come in, hold the gap, and he made contact with the arm. I mean, if he's six inches to the right, that's a tremendous defensive play. So a frustrating one for Jack Scott, but I think the right call from the officials. Third team foul against the Tigers. Oh, Lord. Almost had that ball stolen away. Down to four. Down to three for Gray. Down to two. Down to one. Misses the three. Pierce with the rebound and a loose ball foul on the way. One thing that doesn't get talked about a lot with Cornell, I think they're a great offensive rebounding team. Everything that relates to extra possessions is so harped on by this coaching staff up in Ithaca. They try to turn you over all the time. They get as many shots as they can. That does not stop on the offensive glass. If you're looking at being in the bonus now, with about five seconds left, one of the best free throw shooting teams in the nation. I mean, Princeton, we didn't get a chance to talk about it earlier as much, but they've won games on the free throw line almost by themselves. I mean, against Brown a couple weeks ago, shot at 80%, shot over 30 free throws. That was a huge factor. So if you're Cornell, you got to be aggressive, but you got to be smart about it. You can't put them on the line for long periods of time. Tigers were perfect last night from the line, to your point, 15 of 15. I mean, what an advantage that is for a team. I mean, especially in the Ivy League, so much scouting, such great defense played all the time. I mean, if you're even 10 for 15 last night, that game's a lot different. Oh, no question. The lead down to two for the Big Red. Led by 10 at one point. Williams. Gets by the defense, puts it in, and one. Williams with a three-point play chance on the way. Nazir Williams, one of the quickest first steps in the Ivy League, if not the country. Coming off the handoff, forcing the switch, and then Caden Pierce just on the wrong side by a hair, and it's too late. He's able to finish through the contact for the and one. Williams, one of two players on this Cornell club averaging double figures. Averaging 11 points per game this season. And he gives Cornell a five point lead. Barely. No pictures on the scorecard. <laughs> Four and a half left to go. First half. The Tigers still trying to find their groove. On the offensive side, Alaco trying to back down Williams. Alaco launches a three, clangs off the rim, and a loose ball foul will be against Jack Scott as he tried to get positioning there against DJ Nix. And a good box out. Saw Jack Scott with an offensive rebound earlier tonight, always looking to mix it up in there. Steal an extra possession. And a good box out from DJ Nix. Forcing that over the back that we've seen go the other way a couple times already. Into the corner for Williams. Tigers almost able to come away with that. Williams harassed. Gets to the foul line, lost the ball. That looked like it was trouble. 
And the Tigers come away with it. Another good possession. They've really locked in since the first 10 minutes defensively. A lot better knowing their game plan and a lot better with their activity. Pierce. Lee with nine. Lee gets a step on Nick, serves it up and in. He picks a great time for his first bucket of the contest. They're going to need more of that explosiveness from him the rest of the way if they want to take home the W tonight. A cutting gray puts it home off the feed by Hanson. Beautifully done. And I think Brian Earl's been on the receiving end of a few of those on this floor before. Pierce going at Knicks, missed the layup, got it back. Martini, open look at a three, can't get it to go. And a rebound corralled by Williams. Williams thought about shooting instead. They give it off to Hanson. Williams, open real estate and lays it in. So hard to stay with this Cornell team. You feel like you're in position. You lose focus for one second and it's an open layup, right? I mean, so much motion, so much quick action side to side. So hard to stay with this offense. Brian Earls cooked up. Pierce slings it for Martini. Martini gets to the rim, lays it up and in. Tough finish by Martini. Cuts it to a five-point game. And that is going to be against Cornell. A foul will be called here against Williams. Looked like he was trying to fight through traffic there to get the basketball. Yeah, looking for the back cut, Xavier Lee staying home, but to the baseline, you'll hear Mitch Henderson say it all. That's what's at stake here for both of these teams. They're sharing a part of first place right now with Yale. They'd love to have that number one seed heading into the Ivy League tournament. And you know, this year especially, you look at a pretty severe drop off from the top three in the Ivy League, Princeton, Har uh, excuse me, Princeton, Cornell, and Yale, tremendous programs. There's been a drop off. You know, having that semifinal matchup against Brown instead of Princeton, for example, I mean, that is a huge advantage going into uh, New York City. Cornell fans might argue with that based off of their last loss to the Bears as Blake Peters knocks down a three, but point well taken. I think that's the, the view of many pundits taking a look at how that Ivy League tournament might break down. Manning tries a three, can't answer. Good box out, Peters with the rebound. That's what they want Manning doing. They want him taking those pull-up three-pointers. Not to say he can't make them, but he's so dangerous getting to the rim. Lee gets by Nix, and he is fouled. He took a shot there, but will be rewarded for his effort with two free throws. Yeah, Xavier Lee pulling all the tricks out of the bag. You see him here. Clear foul on Nix, who was a little out of position. And he'll go to the line for two. He's picked up a bit of a gnarly scratch, looks like, too. Aside from the one he already had. As Lee misses the first free throw. And that's been the interesting challenge here for Xavier Lee throughout the course of the season. He's so good at getting to the rim. Teams are trying to take different things away from him, and he's been able to adjust. But... Looking to find some traction here tonight as he gets one of two. The lead at one. You know, Xavier loves space. He loves to have space to work, get by defenders, and so sometimes I feel like when teams do a good job is timeout Cornell. He's also a friend of Mitch Henderson's, and this, yeah. this has always been a matchup that Coach Henderson has talked about that he doesn't look forward to because Cornell's good. <laughs> and, and they put so much pressure on you defensively especially, but also he's going up against one of his dear friends as Beckles drives to the rim and lays it in. And I'll tell you what, I mean, we all remember Matalako's heave at the buzzer to win it. And I remember Mitch Henderson obviously thrilled about the victory, but he was, you know, one of the first thoughts to cross his mind was, was that he had done it to one of his best friends. So I'm sure he would have liked for that game to happen to anyone else as we see. Matalaco recreating the shot in, in question. Rising up, tying the game. He ties it at 33. Manon. Gets it to Noor. A rare tie game tonight. Cornell has been in control most of this first half. 
And a foul coming up. It's against Princeton and Matalaco. That's a tough call. A lot of, looked like they got tangled up. Nord trying to cut back door. Always so tough to guard that legally when Cornell is always intent on cutting very quickly. Right when you're not expecting it. Six team foul against the Tigers. Nord. Now Manon will bring it out near the middle of the floor. Raglan looks at Williams with two. Williams pull up jumper. Got it. Great shot. Nazir Williams has Scott with the heave down floor. And that's a huge number, but a few of those in quick succession were a big momentum swing. And I bet you we see some better three-point shooting from both teams in the second half as they you know, get adjusted to this game. And again, the Tigers taking great care of the basketball. Just two turnovers in the first 20 minutes. Lee, right outside from the elbow, knocks it down to tie it up. Good to see him looking for his own shot early on if you're a Princeton Tigers fan. Hanson. Trying to back down Martini, has to get rid of it after the double team. Nord left all alone from three. And Lee grabbing the loose ball. He'll pull it from deep. Money. Wow. Davian Lee gives Princeton a lead. And he came out ready to go as Nazir Williams firing away. He gets back the miss, the floater up. That misses as well. And the Tigers control. I'd love to know what Mitch Henderson said at halftime because they've come out with tremendous energy. Another three by Lee. That went halfway down wow. and came out. This place was ready to send the roof off if that had gone down. Manon trying to find room to create. Turns left, hangs in the air, and puts it in. You see what he means to this Cornell team. Bit of a shaky start, first few minutes of the second half. Put the ball on his hands, let him create. He gets right to the front of the rim. Manon has six, Lee throws it up off the glass, missed the shot. Williams in transition. Nord cranks it again and hits this time. Yeah, it was only a matter of time before he hit another one. He's had a number of those open looks in transition. He's ready to lock and load. And that's a big shot for Cornell. Second three of the game for Cooper Nord. The lead back to the Big Red. Alaco gets it back from Martini. To the post for Pierce. Pierce against Nord and a foul on the way. It'll be on the floor. And it looks like it'll be against Cooper Nord. And Caden Pierce telling the official exactly what I think got called. Couple hands on him, extending that arm. You got to be careful extending that arm bar. It's legal guarding position until you bring it out past about 90 degrees. So, it's interesting to see if he gets that call going forward. Pierce stuck, and now Lee with six. Martini has his three deflected. Manon, corner three, got it. Chris Manon hits the three-pointer, and Cornell is up by five. That tremendous response from Chris Manon in the big red after getting punched in the mouth a bit to start the second half. Pierce trying to dig in against Hanson, has to get rid of it. Now Martini. And a blocking foul is called. Close call, yeah. So easy to get those calls off of the pass once the ball has left your hand. As Isaiah Gray crossing the lane did a great job trying to get his feet set. I think that call could have gone either way. As we've seen Zach Martini get that baseline drive a couple times. It's not necessarily his strong suit, but good job looking for it as the three-pointers haven't been falling for him just yet. That's the first foul on Gray. Lee will take a seat.
Ten to shoot for Princeton. Till cutting Alaco, who finds a space and lays it in. It was a great read. I don't think that play was for that cut. He's supposed to come off that stagger screen, but he saw that opening, and Caden Pierce with a great look inside. Manon tries to lose Alaco and throws it up and in. He wanted a foul called. He'll get the bucket nonetheless, and he appears to be a little shaken up. Ryan Earl wanted the full court press on that one, but weren't able to get it set up in time. He was screaming at his players to stay up in the front court. Gray against Pierce. Pierce gets position and adds in two. And Caden Pierce starting to feel it. Backdoor cut again, and this time it's Williams. Great cut out of the baseline from Nazir Williams. One of these foundations of both offenses looking for those backdoor cuts. That one was pretty as it comes. Eleven for Manon and also for Williams. Davis gets Manon up in the air, launches and scores. He's got such a deep bag once he comes off those ball screens. So comfortable. I love the coaching staff allowing him to do what he's comfortable with. Gray. The kick to Williams for three. The ricochet to Blake Peters. Pierce against Williams. Turns in between two defenders and scores. That's fantastic footwork as the double team came too late. Used that reverse pivot to split the double team. He's starting to turn the screw for Princeton. Williams stuck underneath the rim. Gray cuts to the rack and scores. These two defenses are scuffling right now. Well, they've got a big long run of play here. A little bit of fatigue, but both offenses looking as dangerous as ever. Tornell has hit on six of their last seven shots. Princeton has hit on three of their last four. And this ball has to go to Caden Pierce at some point. There it is. And knocked out of bounds. Princeton will keep possession of the ball as we head to a timeout. Back and forth play with Chris Manon. Chris Manon coming out of halftime on a mission, getting it done on multiple levels. To the rim, here you see the pretty shot from the corner. Coaching staff is done. Yeah, I mean, they got off to their best start since, what was it, 1914? Something like that. And then, you know, back-to-back -back losses against Yale and Cornell, and then other than that, I mean, almost unblemished, very impressive season for Princeton. Alaco at the rim is foul. I like that call from Mitch Henderson. If you're a Tigers fan, getting your senior involved, getting him on the block, he's been so effective there throughout the years. Princeton is especially tough out of timeouts. It always seems like Coach Henderson is able to get what he wants from the offense out of a timeout. And, and what, what, I, what I always liked as a player under Mitch Henderson was, you know, the, the out-of-bounds plays were never super fluky, if that makes any sense. It wasn't just a quick hitter to get a shot. It was always through the offense and so if it didn't work you weren't out of position it wasn't didn't feel like a trick play you're just looking for the right matchup and the right look out of the offense that he's already installed throughout the entire year and that time able to get a quick hitter right to Matt Alaco because that's the matchup he wanted two from Alaco one point lead for Cornell Beckel trapped finds Raglan and a foul on the Tigers as it will be charged to Jack Scott. We'll check that, Zach Martini. Hey, he came around looking for the strip on Guy Raglan. Yeah, there was a lot of contact with the ball there. Definitely got some of the arm, but that's a, an interesting call from the from the baseline referee especially. Okareke with the ball. Going at Scott, spinning, and can't get it to drop. Lee out of the pack with the basketball. Princeton can take a lead. The 
Tigers trailed by two at halftime. Down by one. Scott launches. Can't get it. Long rebound. Tipped to Alaco. Yeah, big play from Zach Martini. We've talked about it a, a bunch, but these extra possessions in the second half are going to be key. Double team sent Pierce's way. Alaco digs in. Fadeaway jumper. Got it. Matt Alaco, the job. senior, too tough. I love Caden Pierce's patience out of that double team. They're able to work it around. Find where the defense has under-rotated. And just a tough shot from Matt Alaco. Off the missed three-pointer. Pierce with another rebound. Pierce blows by Boothby. And a foul against Boothby that will send Pierce to the free throw line. Caden Pierce has had a terrific second half so far. I love him recognizing that matchup was favorable to him and puts it on the floor. And Cornell fortunate to not give up a potential three-point play there. These two teams so evenly matched as Pierce sinks the first. Cornell plays so fast it almost feels like it takes some time as a player to get used to that kind of speed and trying to defend it and play off it and on the other side. It's very difficult to simulate in practice. I mean, they are so committed to this philosophy, and it works so well for them. But, you know, just like with any team, but especially them, I mean, it's impossible to run a scout that's very effective for the Cornell Big Red just because they got so many different looks. They got so much speed. Largest lead of the game for the Tigers. Okareke to the rim, launches with the left hand, can't get it, tipped outside, Williams gets it. Williams' runner is short, Raglan offensive rebound. Williams tries another corner bucket, that misses everything yet again. A big empty possession for Cornell. Had quite a few bites at the cherry there, not able to come away with anything, and now Princeton with a chance to extend their lead. Lay to the rim, gets swatted by Ragland, got it back, loose ball. Nord, establishing possession for Cornell. Lobbed to Ragland, snatched out of the air by Pierce. He said, I don't think so. Yeah, that was a great read from Caden Pierce. He came from the other side of the court there, read the eyes of, I believe it was Nazir Williams, picked it out of the air. Pierce trying to back down Williams and a whistle against Cornell. Williams will pick up the foul. The Tigers lead it by three off of the 15 foul committed by Cornell. And we're done. <laughs> that really helped establish him as a clutch player. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It feels like anytime he has the ball in his hands in crunch time, the Tigers are comfortable. People forget that was his first career start. Jalen Llewellyn missed the entire game with a hamstring pull, and he was just ready to go from the get-go. He hasn't looked back since then. Xavier Lee will go to the line. Also his uh, 21st birthday, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, <laughs> sir. It was his birthday that day. And what a present he gave the Tigers with that win. Lee at the stripe. And he misses the first. Lee has been basically an 85, 86% free throw shooter for the balance of the season, but he has struggled a little bit from the line as of late. It's always easier to shoot free throws when you're Scoring 30 points against teams who don't even know who you are. Now that that there's a little more preparation in the league, always tougher to score. I think that extends to the free throw line as well. Biggest lead of the night for Princeton. Four points, 53-49. Another cut by Williams and another bucket. Williams and and one that could potentially cut this to a one-point deficit. I'll tell you what, the thing about these backdoor cuts, 
Sometimes it doesn't even look open, but if the defender's head is facing the wrong way, it doesn't even matter. That time Isaiah Gray recognizes Xavier Lee is beat by, I don't even want to say a half a step, a quarter of a step. Puts it in the perfect place where only Nazir Williams can get it. He does a good, he does the rest, finishing strong. Can't finish it off. The lead at two for Princeton. Scott against Manna. Alaco hits the three-pointer. He loves that pull-up shot going left. And I think that was a set play. Jack Scott in the post. Great look to Alaco. Makes the right read and drills it. Hansen distributes to Williams. Manna went into shooting mode, but passed it up. Hansen double teamed and a turnover force. And Alaco is knocked to the floor by Sean Hansen. He's fired up too, and I can't blame him. I'll tell you what, I think there was miscommunication because both Caden Pierce and Matt Alaco went to double Sean Hansen, but that tells you, you'll see here on the replay, yeah, it's Caden Pierce and Alaco both going. If that ball ends up on the perimeter, it's going to be an easy shot. He gets his hands in the air at the last second, and he's going to the line. And it's important to note here, that's the first foul on Hansen as Alaco sinks the free throw, but it's the seventh team foul by the Big Red. So the Tigers will be going to the line the remainder of the way if they are fouled. We've already talked about how important that is. And I do think that Mitch Henderson, you know, working the refs in the first half has paid some dividends. It's always tough to find that right line. But it does seem like there's been a few more calls going Princeton's way in the second half and later in the first half. One disparity in the two games so far, free throw shooting and the attempts. Princeton took 33 of them in the loss to just nine for the Big Red. Not as stark of a difference tonight, but it could end up that way. Manon hits the three from straight on. Chris Manon. Huge shot. That's a huge shot. And Alaco loses the ball. It goes out of bounds over to Cornell. So the Big Red needed to create something to get into this deficit. And they may have just done that. They always got to be ready for the press. I mean, if you can steal a possession here and there, on the road, so important. I was shocked by that stat you said about the game in Ithaca. I mean, that is, to win a game by 15 points where you're outshot from the line by 24 attempts, I mean, that is it's unbelievable. It's very unusual. Okareke, open is gray. Missed the three, tip for Hanson. Nine and a half left to go in the battle between two of the three teams in first place in the Ivy League. Down to five. Okareke, fadeaway jumper, can't get it. Martini ends up with the ball. Oh, and Davis wow. was not looking. He got it at the last second. Back shoulder fade from Zach Martini. <laughs> And Peters has his pass intercepted by Gray. Gray is held up and knocked to the floor. They're going to call it on the floor. Foul on, uh, excuse me, I believe it's uh, Xavier Lee. Princeton wanted the jump ball, but you're not going to get those sorts of calls off turnovers like that. So difficult to, to guard legally in those sorts of scenarios. And Princeton, you got to be careful with the ball here. I mean, they were lucky to not get punished on the previous possession off the turnover uh, on the inbounds pass. Giving the ball away there could have been a, uh, a run-out layup. Okareke will try it from deep. Missed the three. Another rebound, this time by Gray. Gray gets the seam, misses the layup, but... Looks like he could be headed to the free throw line. I'd be surprised. But they are going to call it in the air. So Gray will head to the stripe. That's the third foul picked up by Dalen Davis.
first from Gray is in. Pierce will spell Blake Peters. You gotta be ready for the press here if you're Princeton. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Brian Earl goes back to it after the success they had on the last one. Gray misses a second, and lock over the rebound. The Tigers trying to end their regular season home schedule perfect. 11-0 so far, looking for win number 12 at Jadwick. Pierce tries to spin, and he lost the ball. Manning, the kick, the three up. That is no good. Manning gets the rebound. Manning, and Manning is fouled. And that is against Dalen Davis. And Cornell's really kicked it up a notch. Dalen Davis has given up a couple offensive rebounds here with the size disadvantage. And Cornell really turning up the intensity defensively and getting those extra plays on offense that could make a big difference. And that could be a big foul. That's the fourth foul on Davis, and you take a scoring option off the bench out of Princeton's back pocket as the three-pointer is knocked down by Fegan. He has tied this game up at 58. Ooh, Alaco is saving that ball from going out of bounds. Lee stops, pops, and can't connect. Williams swoops in for the board. Cornell can regain the lead. Williams, pinned in the corner. Gets it back from Ragland. Williams gets the crossover, throws it up, and he is fouled. And Williams will head to the stripe. Out of the timeout. Mason, the big red, keeping it close, and they've tied it up at 58. Huge response from them after the run from Princeton. 58-58, seven to go. What else do you want? I yeah, I mean, I think you get any run of prolonged success, people are going to start flocking to you. But sometimes, especially coming off the back of the pandemic, it takes a lot of continued success. And finally, it feels like the students here and in the town have started to recognize what a special program has been built here by Mitch Henderson. And obviously, you know, a Sweet 16 run doesn't hurt. He talked about trying to obviously establish a culture of winning and tradition, but he said he wanted to get a lot of fans back in the building, and that graphic bared it out. Third largest crowd tonight here at Jadwin since 2005. A lead for the Big Red of two. 60 to 58, Derek Jones and Mason Hooks with you tonight. A matchup between two of the three first place teams in the Ivy League. Pierce. Martini with a handoff for Scott. Down to three. Martini hits the three-pointer. The senior coming up big on senior night. I'll tell you what, I mean, he was 0 for 6 before that shot. But I think as great shooters would tell you, there's no way he's going 0 for 7, right? Williams, wide open, tees it up and knocks it down. A lead back to Cornell. Nazir Williams up to game high. Excuse me, that's not not quite. Cornell's high of 18 points. Having a great night. Matalaco leads all scorers in this game. He has 19. Pierce swings it. Scott wide open from deep. Got it. Jack Scott hits the three-pointer. Princeton regains the lead. And they left him wide open, dared him to shoot, and he stepped into it with confidence. Knocked it down. Williams cut off by Pierce. Manning 
against Martini, lays it up and in, plus the foul. And he conti continues to add to his monster second half. That time, just gets the step on Martini off the spin move. Able to go up and finish through contact, excuse me, through contact, not through context. Great play from Chris Pannon. Well, I mean, maybe he did finish through contact. I guess you could do that. We'll have to see if there's <laughs> if there's history between the two of them. Man and good on the three-point play. Certainly, when you start taking a look at who's going to be winning the accolades in the Ivy League, Manon, clearly a candidate for all Ivy honors. And he could make a case as well, potentially, for player of the year as well. They end up with the sole Ivy League championship. He'll definitely expect it. Two-point lead as Lee finds Scott. Approaching five minutes left to go. Then a seesaw second half. Three to shoot for Alaco. He launches, misses the shot. Pierce had a opportunity to get the ball, but Williams out of the pack. Williams nearly lost the ball. Down low to Raglan, and Raglan is fouled. He'll go to the line now. And every single play in this game seems like it's being decided by inches at this point. I mean, Caden Pierce almost had a terrific rebound, but loose ball here. You see Jack Scott lunging for it, not able to come up with it. Guy Raglan with the nice bounce to him gets fouled. This could be a preview of the semifinal round of the Ivy League tournament, depending on what happens the remainder of tonight. And of course, next Saturday as Raglan sinks the first free throw. Brown, at last check, was closing in on officially wrapping up their fourth spot. They have won and defeated Dartmouth. Raglan misses a second lead. Able to get the loose change. Lee on the attack at the rim, missed the shot. Okareke with the rebound. Williams down low, Raglan puts it home. And a timeout called by the Tigers as Cornell up by five. Cornell has really responded to them, but tonight they've always been able to find their groove when they need it the most. Every time it looks like Princeton's got them figured out, they're able to just kick it into another gear and retain that lead. Just you see what the it'll be interesting to see what the adjustment for Princeton is going forward because they haven't gotten much of anything going offensively over the past three or four minutes. Lee gets to the rim and puts it in. Xavier Lee, another difficult finish by Lee. The lead at three for Cornell. Hansen lost the ball. It looked like it just slipped out of his hand. And so. Alaco gets a screen by Pierce. Crosses over Gray. Lee, step back three. Left it short, but right to Alaco. Lee, to the rim, lost the ball. These possessions so precious down the stretch. Okareke double team for a moment. Now looking for help. And Gray stepped out of bounds in front of the Cornell bench. I'll tell you what, that's a great job, Princeton. As soon as the ball handler picks up that ball, you do not need to be in your gap anymore. And they did a great job going to the bodies of their man. Did not Ivy League titles and, of course, the NCAA tournament and a Sweet 16 appearance. Three-point lead. 
for the Cornell Big Red. Peters. Now Lee. Peters gets it back, trying to find some space to operate. Lee will fire with seven and knock down the three to tie it up. Big shot, Zavian Lee. Put it on his cape late in the game tonight. He is just 5 of 15 from the field, but doing it when it's needed the most. Williams swooping in with the layup. Yeah, Nazir Williams had a tremendous night shooting the ball from the outside and getting fouled, getting to the line. 8 for 13 from the field, 21 points to lead all scorers. He's put the team on his back to, at times tonight. Pierce. Gets by Hanson, pump fake, missed the layup, got it back, put it up, and a foul. That was a great move, didn't have a lot of room down there, was able to get to the baseline, able to draw the foul. He's frustrated, he wanted that and one. The Ivy League tournament takes place in a couple weeks, but it feels like that has arrived here to Jadwin tonight. There's a lot of energy in this building right now. Crowd trying to will the Tigers to a huge victory. We're going to have a real deal grandstand finish. People are, are packed to the rafters here in Jadwin tonight. Another sellout crowd watching what they hope will be another Princeton victory. Two from Pierce to tie the game. Princeton, by the way, has one timeout left. If you're Princeton here, you need your best defensive possession of the game, and you need to finish it with a rebound. I would, I would expect the ball to be in Nazir Williams' hands as it's been so many times tonight. When Cornell has had the lead with five minutes left in games, they are 19-1 and one this season. They had the lead with five left. Let's see if they can finish it. Raglan against a smaller lead. Double team sent. Manon goes at Peters with five. Manon turns. Can't get it to go. Tipped out of bounds. And it is Princeton ball. And a lot of people on the Cornell bench looking for a review. I don't think you can... Yeah, it was an interesting call. It came off bang, bang, play. But normally the offensive player coming in and swinging is not going to get the call on that, even if it, it grazes the defender's hands on the way out. Brian Earl in the big red, you're right. They wanted a review of that play, and the officials will talk about it. And it looks like they will, in fact, review this play. And this is a help for Cornell and Princeton as well. They get a chance to talk things over with their respective teams. And it was good defense from Blake Peters forcing a bit of a contested shot. And the question is, I think that ball came out of the frame a little bit. The question is if it's off Pierce or Chris Mannon. Giving Princeton the ball back as we get a look at the Ivy League scores. Brown with the win. And, of course, Harvard in big trouble against Yale. 71 all. Both teams in a one-and-one -one situation. Alaco flips it to Pierce, who puts it in. Caden Pierce. And one. Man, one of the best possessions of the game for Princeton as this place is going wild. Matt Alaco off the curl, taking it to the rim, drawing the second defender, and then Caden Pierce was never going to mess from miss from there. And that foul is against Jake Began. That is number five. He is gone. And you said it. I mean, they don't have that stoppage of play. They can't draw up something like that. That was a great look from Alaco. Put it in your seniors' hands. Obviously, Caden Pierce now up to 20 points, continues to do what he does. Princeton also now in the double bonus, something to keep an eye on down the stretch here. Pierce, 6 of 6. They get 7 of 7. 
Princeton leads by three. 111 left. And a foul against Princeton. And it looks like it'll be on Xavier Lee. Tough call this late in the game. Unbelievable. At least according to Lee. <laughs> he did not understand that. And Coach Henderson protesting as well. Williams at the strike. Four of six from the free throw line. An 81% shooter on the air. Knocks down the front end of a one and one. Yeah, I think Mitch Henderson going, gonna go to some sort of back cut post up here. Two from Williams. Big free throws and now they gotta break the press. 74-73, Princeton leads. 107 left, Cornell has three timeouts remaining, the Tigers with just one. Next Cornell foul will be a two-shot foul for the Tigers. Pierce, checked by Ragland. Pierce turns inside, puts it in, Caden Pierce. Puts Princeton back out in front by three, 40 seconds left. Manning sets up shot for three. Off the rim, no good, nearly tipped back in. Lee comes away with it. And a foul against Cornell. And what a fantastic post up from Caden Pierce. Went right to him one on one, game on the line. Gets down there, Sky Raglan forced to stand and watch. Can't jump and risk the foul. Davian Lee going to the line. Chris Manning got a great look on the other end. The big free throws here. You're exactly right. That's an awesome look. Bit of a mix up on the ball screen from Princeton. and Those are shots he's been hitting all night. Lee can put a lot of pressure here on Cornell. He hits the first. And Brian Earl has called a timeout for the Big Red. Can you imagine seeing this game again in any iteration in a couple of weeks, whether it's a semifinal or a championship game? Flirting with being three games back in the standings, and all of a sudden, it could be tied for first tonight, but the free throw missed by Lee. Still a chance for Cornell. Manning on the attack, falling down. Williams with 20 seconds left. Williams throws it up, and he is fouled. Two-shot foul coming for Williams. Peters will pick up the foul. Cornell very fortunate that they were able to get something out of that scramble. Yeah, well, not only with that one. I mean, that's a questionable call to me down with 15 seconds to go. I mean, I understand Xavier Lee swipes down at that, but they're fortunate to get that call. And also fortunate to avoid that traveling violation from Chris Mannon. I think he got rid of it in time, but he lost his footing in the post. Would have been devastating for them. Trying to clear up a spot on the floor. It will be a two-shot foul here for Williams. Double bonus, rest of the way, both ways. The fans trying to distract Williams, and they do. Jalen Davis, how's your nerve? <laughs> Haven't seen much of him with foul trouble, and they'll throw throwing the freshman in. 15 seconds to go. I mean, tells you how much trust they have in him. Williams takes a deep breath. Gets a second. 
and a timeout called by Cornell. They now have one left, so one timeout left each way. Princeton and Brown, the question is, what will be the order besides Brown being in fourth? Scott and Alaco go back and forth. Scott with 15 seconds. He is fouled by Isaiah Gray. So I'll again, two shot foul. Yeah, going to that you know, pass the ball out of bounds play, and Matalaco was close to that baseline. Always risky when, when you have to throw that one, but a good job getting it in his hands. And Cornell did not foul right away. They wanted that first trap. They are looking to check how much time is left in accordance with that foul. One timeout left each way, and... Mason, you, you hinted upon it earlier. I mean, you've seen these situations play out as a player. What do you think the coaches are talking about here with the team? Well, for Mitch Henderson talking defensively here, you have to make sure everybody's on the same page, whether or not they're switching everything, whether they're going over certain ball screens. I would be shocked if they weren't switching everything with this lineup and in this scenario. And obviously, make or miss, you defend the three-point line and you cannot foul. They're going to the rack evacuate I mean there's no reason to defend the to defend the paint with any real ferocity in this situation now on the other side Jack Scott will go to the line here again it's double bonus both ways so this will be a two-shot foul big spot. Off the, big spot for Jack Scott you know has has had points of this year not playing at all Playing significant minutes tonight, especially with Dalen Davis in foul trouble. And he's had a long time to think about these, it has to be said. For Scott tonight, he's played 17 minutes. He had a three earlier on in that back and forth ebb and flow portion of the second half. Three points on the night along with three rebounds, but an opportunity here to make life very difficult for the Big Red. Guy Raglan Jr. back into the game for the Big Red. And actually, well, not yet. They're Two sending, shots. They're sending him back. You got to sub after the first shot. Correct. So Coach Earl will send two in after this Scott free throw. That is no good. <laughs> Cornell has one timeout left. So if Scott cannot hit this free throw. I honestly, I don't think they're going to call timeout. I think they're going to run with it just like they normally do. Scott gets a second. Big time. Big time from Jack Scott. 78-74, 11 seconds left. Williams trying to get to the rim. Williams, jumper, no good. And Lee is knocked to the floor with 4.5 left. And the Tigers are making their way potentially towards another win here at Jadwin, and Jack Scott is fired up. As he should be. I mean, that's about as high pressure as it comes in front of six, five, six thousand. You know what, he missed that first one. It didn't look to fluster him. That's impressive. I think he stepped up there for the second shot and drilled it like he knew he could. That's a great point. How many times do you see people miss that first shot in a situation that's similar and then go on to miss the second? As Lee misses the first free throw. And one more timeout called and the fans are booing Cornell because they have called a timeout which will be their final timeout with 4.5 left to go Princeton Lee's second is good 
ahead to Nord, launches a three, hits it with .8 seconds left. Ahead for Pierce, and that'll do it. The two longtime friends exchange handshakes.